The decay of radioactive isotopes, or radioisotopes, can be used to estimate the age of materials. This video will explain that process and show you some examples. As a parent isotope decays into a daughter isotope, the amount of the parent isotope present will decrease, while the amount of the daughter isotope present will increase. So we can see that the ratio of the amount of daughter isotope to parent isotope present will increase over time. The Science 10 data booklet has a chart showing common parent-daughter isotope pairs. It also shows the half-life of each of the parent isotopes. We can see that it takes 5,730 years for half of a sample of carbon-14 to decay to nitrogen-14, whereas it takes 47 billion years for half of a sample of rubidium-87 to decay to strontium-87. Living things all contain carbon, and some of it is radioactive carbon-14. The amount of carbon-14 remaining in a sample is used to estimate the age of dead organisms. This isotope pair works well for organic objects up to about 50,000 years old. Measuring the ratio of argon-40 to potassium-40 helps geologists estimate the age of rocks up to about 4.5 billion years old, the age of the Earth. Let's take a closer look at the carbon-14 dating system. Earth's atmosphere contains the element carbon, mainly in the form of carbon dioxide, CO2. Most of the carbon in the atmosphere consists of the stable isotope, carbon-12. But a very small fraction is a radioactive isotope called carbon-14. The ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere has been relatively constant for the last 50,000 years. While they're alive, plants and animals are constantly ingesting carbon from the environment, from carbon dioxide or food. So while they're still alive, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in their bodies remains the same as it is in the environment. When an organism dies, it stops getting fresh carbon from the environment. Carbon-12 is a stable isotope, so if a dead artifact is preserved, the amount of carbon-12 in it remains the same as it gets older. However, carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope, so the amount of carbon-14 in the bone slowly decreases as this carbon-14 decays. So as the object gets older, carbon-14 decreases and carbon-12 stays the same. So the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 gradually decreases over time. Carbon-14 nuclei undergo beta decay when they are converted to stable nitrogen-14. This graph shows the percent of original carbon-14 remaining in a dead organism as it ages. It shows the percent remaining after each half-life. For example, after one half-life, 50% of the original carbon-14 remains. And after two half-lives have passed, 25% of the original carbon-14 remains in the sample. By the time it reaches eight half-lives, there is hardly any carbon-14 left in the sample. We know that the half-life of carbon-14 is 57, 30 years. So we can say that if the object has been dead for 57, 30 years, 50% 50 of its original carbon-14 will still be present. The other 50% will have been converted to nitrogen-14. We can also look at a graph of the percent of original carbon-14 remaining plotted against the object's actual age in years. We can see that even though we have a different scale on the x-axis, the half-life still shows as 57, 30 years. Notice that the numbers on the x-axis are in thousands of years rather than just in years. We can use this graph to help us find the age of an object. Here's an example. A rib bone from an archaeological site was analyzed. By measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the sample and comparing it to that in the environment, archaeologists calculated that 12% of its original carbon-14 remained. So the question is, how old is the bone? We draw a line from the 12 on the percent axis over to the curve. Then, from that point, we draw a straight line down to the x-axis, or the age axis. And we see that it hits the x-axis at a point corresponding to 17,500 years. 
so we can say that the bone is approximately 17,500 years old.